Hello and welcome back. In the previous part, we covered most of the topics about the requests and these were the topics that we covered in the previous video. And in this uh, tutorial, what we are going to do is we are going to cover the request validation and also creating a custom request. So if you have any uh, doubt about the request, what you can do, you can go to the laravel.com and here inside the basics, we have the requests and you can read all about the requests here. Uh, these, this is really a nice documentation that you can learn a lot from it. And also for the validation, what you can do is you can go to the basics and here you have the validation and we'll cover most of the content here today. Okay, so for the request validation, what does it, what does it mean to request the validation? If you remember from the uh, server side consideration, first of all, we need to use a request, a custom request or a default request. And uh, next, we need to validate the inputs which is coming from the client. Suppose you have this data in your opportunities table and you need the title, description, and so on. But users, uh, mostly the user in enters or in uh, the user input is something different. So you cannot uh, store it in your database. And uh, if suppose here for the timestamp, you need the, for the deadline, you need a timestamp, but user is entering a string, a gibberish in, a string. So you, you cannot store it here inside your database or you'll get an error from the database that this column is missing or this column data is incorrect or the format is not correct. So what you can do before anything else, you need to validate the data or the inputs which is coming from the client, whether it's a mobile application or it's a, uh, you know, a front end. So how we can validate it? So let me do it for the uh, opportunity here. I am going to copy this part because this timestamp is going to be added by the Laravel itself automatically and also this ID is auto incremented. So I'm going to copy all the other fields and these fields are all required from where I know these fields are required because if any field is not required it should be something called nullable or it should have a default value suppose a default value is something like this and if it doesn't have an if the column is not nullable or doesn't have a default value then it is required you can see here most of our columns are required but if I go to the opportunity details, you can see here we have some nullable parts like these further queries. It's nullable and also official link is nullable. And for the questions, I'm not sure. And for the comments, we have not a default value. But as I mentioned, the defaults are just added here. So we'll have something called default value and this default value can be anything. Okay, if doesn't have a de default value or it is not uh, what you can say nullable, then it is definitely required and, it, and you need to uh, store some data or need to put some data to it. So I'm just going to copy it again and I'm going back to the uh, controllers, HTTP controllers and opportunity controller. And here inside the request method, I'm going to paste it here. And these are the fields that we need to validate. And here for the Laravel 7, what you can do, you can just call the request that you get and uh, just remember this request is a default request. And this default request is an instance of Illuminate HTTP request class. So if you go to the request here at the beginning, you can see here that to obtain an instance of HTTP request via dependency in injection, what you can do, you can call this uh, Illuminate HTTP request class and you can use it here in, in case of the store, we have the request and also this request. So this is a default request here. Let me minimize this one. So this is a default request that we have here. And uh, if we want to use the custom request, we'll cover it later. And this request in Laravel 7 has a method in it called validate. And here, what we can do, we need to pass array of rules. You can see we need to just pass an array of rules with some parameters. So I'm going to pass an array here. And here, what we need is for the title. This is the title stored in our database. This should be required. And it should be a string. 
with maximum 255 characters so these are the validation rules so from where I know these values if you go to the Laravel here inside the validations what you can do you can search for available uh, validation rules if you click here you can see you have a bunch of uh, available rules that you can use suppose for the case of array what you can do you can use this one and uh, for the rest suppose for the date you can use this one and there are many many what we can say uh, rules that you can follow and basically these are all the validation rules that you can use and mostly these are some examples also uh, suppose required unique and maximum 2055 these are the rules that you can follow and also what you can do is you can also pass it like this pass it like a specific uh, array and mean array inside array so required and also comma unique inside the post so this is also another way that you can use it i'm going with this part and for the description because it is a text and it's written here it's a text what i'm going to do i'm just going to put required to it and uh, so on what i'm going to do is i'm just uh, going to uh, stop here because the rest of the validation we can just uh, put it uh, uh, next time and if i do so this tutorial this video will get lengthy so i do not want that and right now if i add this validation and suppose right now i'm going to the postman what i'm going to do is here i'm going to call the uh, localhost uh, opportunity here and the method is post and suppose if I send this request, we get this page. Basically, this is a Laravel page. And if I go to the visualize, you can see it can't be visualized. And if I go to the preview, you can see this is a, a what you can say a page that we are getting. Why we are getting this page? Because uh, let me put some things here. Return. Um, so this should be sorry. This should be return uh, testing data. And if I just call it again, we get the same thing. But if I just comment out this validation and send it back, we are getting testing data. Why we are getting that page? Because we are the validation is failing, and we, the validation failed here, and we are getting redirected to another page. So this is not the uh, output or the result that we want basically what we want is something like if the validation is failing we want some nice messages to show it to the user that yes the validation is failed and uh, you can do this thing and that thing so uh, how we can do that if you remember from uh, our authentication routes what we did was uh, here was creating a custom validator class and if you go to the uh, validation, you can see here we have something called uh, not custom request form. We'll cover this one. Validation, uh, validator, I think it is. Uh, let me do it like this, validator. And uh, we have something here like the validate, not the validate. Wow, let me find out where it is. I got okay let me find out it is here so what we have is here we can create a custom validator and this custom validator takes the request all and then we are validating and if this validation fails what we want is we want to redirect it with errors and these errors so we did it with the validator if you remember with the login we uh, validated and use this validator and if the validation fails what we want is we just response with errors and all the errors that we have with this status code uh, which is uh, 422 uh, specifically it says that the validation is failed okay so we are not going to use this one this validator rather what we want is to use the forum request so if you go to the validation here let me search for the forum requests it is here forum request validation and uh, what we can do is we can create something like uh, a custom request here by using the make request 
and then we can use that so let me copy this part and uh, I'm going to the terminal I'm going to stop the server what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the server clear this one and I'm going to paste that oh it's not pasting PHP artisan um, make request and this request I'll call it as opportunity opportunity you can name it as you want suppose I am going to call it opportunity uh, storing store and um, opportunity store that's it so you can you can put any name and uh, here if you just uh, hit enter you can see that the request created successfully and if you go to the HTTP uh, and then you can see here a request directory added and if I click on it you can see we have the opportunity store which extends the forum request and here by default we have two methods first of all we have the authorize and also we have the rules so the authorize means wh whether this uh, should be authorized or not I mean the user is authorized to access this uh, endpoint or this request or not so what we want is we want the user to be authorized or authenticated to use this request and also here we have this set of rules so let me copy these rules from here so it is the same what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and I'm going to comment out this part and I'm going to put the rules here so we have the rules but right now it's the same thing and if I send the request we are getting oh let me turn on the server okay and if I send the request we are getting this testing data why we are getting this testing data we validated here but we didn't use it let me minimize this one what we are using here is the default request and this default request is coming from the illuminate HTTP request so we didn't validate it so how we can override this one and how we can use our custom request what we can do is here let me delete this part and what we can do is opportunity store if you see here it is inside app HTTP requests so I will call it as request and right now the same thing if I try to send this end I mean this request we are getting the same error or the same result that we got before why we are getting the same result because we are not doing anything else rather than validating but what we can do here we have a function called failed validation and this failed validation uh, just uh, providing us with this validator and this validator has many things suppose with the we have the uh, errors here so all the errors will show all the errors which errors we failed suppose read me send it you can see here we get the instance of this failed validation but we need to you know implement this interface because this needs this validator and we cannot use this uh, errors on it and if I do so we get the same result but what we can do is here we can throw we can throw a new HTTP response exception and uh, <coughs> this response exception we can put a message here suppose let me put something like this one with the errors and this errors is basically this uh, validator errors so and also what we can do is here putting that 422 status code and if I refresh it now you can see we are getting this okay line 35 opportunity store line 35 uh, through new HTTP and this is why happening because what we need is we need to import this class so this class is not existed and we need to bring it in so in HTTP uh, it is inside the this part it is inside just remember this path it is inside illuminate HTTP exception HTTP response exception that's why we, we can use that right now.
and if I send the request we get the same result so what we can do is I think this needs something else and that is uh, first of all let me hover on it see what we need is we need a message we need a code and uh, also what we want is we need to pass a response here so it is not we need to pass a response here and this response is in the JSON format and inside that we have a uh, what we can say an array so this has the errors inside that errors and inside these errors what we have is that validator all errors so this is how we can use that and also we need to pass the 422 status code I think and no this can be passed inside this uh, JSON response okay so 422 okay so right now if I refresh this one we can see nicely we get these errors so these errors title description and uh, you completely you're getting all the errors and uh, you're not getting any more that uh, what you can say that that page which was nothing I mean let me just comment out this one to see that previous result before and right now we are getting this page and this page doesn't say anything and uh, inside the API's so what we need this or what we want is this one and if I send it back right now we are getting all the errors and these errors are really nice and descriptive that see the title the title field is required and suppose if I put something else suppose the uh, deadline and uh, this deadline is also required and uh, it should be a dead, uh, dead time so the time and right now if I send that you can see the deadline is also uh, added here so this is how you can create a custom request and also you can uh, what you can say you can validate it and uh, also you can have your own um, res response with all the specific messages that you want to use and the last part that I want to tell you about is that uh, this part right now even though this uh, this is true I mean the uh, authorize it's true but sometimes it is not working I don't know why maybe I'm missing something but what you can do if you want to uh, you are if you want your um, what we can say your endpoints should be authorized to be accessed you can use a middleware and add the middleware or API here and right now let me close this one to see it nicely what you can do is adding a middleware to it a middleware like this uh, art API to authorize uh, your endpoint to be accessed and right now we are getting this unauthenticated and how we can authenticate it you can add the headers uh, authorization header here authorization and also the adding beater to it with the token that we have and I'm going to copy this token okay so I'm going to add it here and if I add it here right now we are getting that so before anything else it will check for the authorization and then it will try to validate it so this is how it works so thank you for watching this was all about the custom request and also about the uh, validation that you can use so make sure just uh, to read this uh, documentation and it clearly says a lot and I can't cover all the details only in this a small video or in a specific video so you can just go and follow this uh, documentation uh, mostly Laravel provides a nice and true documentation that you can follow